uh, I also met around this time David Friedman, and he had exactly the same experience as I did. He also started out with a heavy duty mathematician, and he has some very, very fancy, very difficult to understand mathematical papers in his early career. And later on, he started doing some legal work. He, he got involved in some real world cases. Uh, one was about the census undercount that the way that uh, the population census is conducted, it undercounts minorities, which reduces their vote. And some other cases about discrimination against women and how much money, how much less money they make. Then he told me that when he started doing this, he said that, oh, so we are making these assumptions to do these calculations, but these assumptions are not valid. So he really got concerned about how the theory doesn't actually work, but people use it anyway. So he said, no, I'm not going to use it anyway. I'm going to try to do things correctly. And then he eventually he wrote this book called Introductory St Textbook of Introductory Statistics. Uh, and in this, there is not a single mathematical formula because he said mathematics is a distraction. It keeps pre prevents people from thinking. <clears throat> so I went to the, uh, after a long period of time uh, in the USA, I went to Pakistan. Uh, first, I went to Turkey to teach at Bill Kent University for six years. And then I went to Pakistan, taught at LUMS. And then I ended up at International Islamic University. And uh, Higher Education Commission created a program to support PhD students. So I created a PhD program in econometrics. I wanted to teach econometrics, but um, because that, is, that was a specialized skill that I had, which nobody else had at that time. And so in, in Pakistan. So I thought about how I could do this because it would be impossible for me to teach all the mathematics and the statistics and the probability and the economics that was required for uh, that the training I had, I could not give. But after thinking about the utility aspect, how to make this useful, uh, instead of doing theory, if I wanted to focus on practice, then I realized I could do it. It's, uh, it's a very important metaphor that I understood. See, you have a car. Suppose I say, how do you manufacture a car? Now, this is very, very difficult. There is, you know, you have to do metallurgy, you have to do engines, you have to do pistons and cylinders and radiators and huge amount of learning required to manufacture a car. But how about how to drive a car? But that's very easy. Everybody can do it. And uh, people all over the world with very little knowledge, not even having high school diploma, not even knowing how to read and write, they can learn how to drive. So I said, I'm going to teach econometrics, not from the theory point of view, but from the point of view of learning how to drive. And so basically that is what led me to rethink about econometrics. Instead of thinking about statistics as you know, normal distribution and Poisson distribution. I say, how is statistics used in this world? Let, it, let me teach students how to use statistics to solve real world problems. Now, when you, uh, that's about how to drive the car. Now, don't worry about what goes, goes into the engine of the car. So most drivers, when they open up the hood of the car, they don't understand what's in there. They don't, they can't recognize the radiator and the spark plugs and they don't need to. They can be excellent drivers without that. So there was no such textbook at that time. No, uh, there's no such textbook even now, which can teach students how to drive, how to use statistics uh, without uh, teaching them the theory. So when I started this program, I took my students to the local Merkaz of Tabligh and we made dua to Allah to give us guidance and uh, enlighten us and, and guide us on this path towards this new field that I plan to construct because I'm not going to teach econometrics in the way that it was taught to me. So there is a very important distinction between useful knowledge and useless knowledge. Allah, Prophet of Allah asked for useful knowledge and sought protection from useless knowledge. So the question is for Muslim teachers, what is useful knowledge and what is useless knowledge? This is not part of the Western uh, tradition. <clears throat> How can we tell whether statistics is useful knowledge or useless knowledge? Is it permissible for us as Muslims to teach economics 
which is teaching the students that the rational behavior is to maximize pleasure. Is this what Islam teaches us? It doesn't teach us to maximize pleasure. Uh, is it permissible to teach calculus, zoology, bot botany? When the students that we are have, they will never use this information in their lives. <laughs> Only a very small specialized set of people will actually use this knowledge. Uh, much more important is learning how to live, learning how to become a better person, learning how to tell the truth, learning how to have courage, learning how to love others, learning how to have compassion. So then I was forced to ponder about what is useful and what is useless. And I realized that in the West, they make the distinction in a different way. <laughs> 